Hello, my name is Emily. I'm much like you in many ways, perhaps. I have a normal suburban house. I have two parents that love me. I go to high school and I love animals. But one thing in my life is possibly nothing like anything you've ever experienced. My sister Amy. Amy was not normal. She never had been. She held a burning hatred for me from the moment I was born. My parents told me she once tried to put me into a washing machine and turn it on to see if it would hurt me. She called it an experiment. Thankfully, my parents intercepted her cruel antics and began to distance her from me since then. Amy was cruel and scary, even to my parents. Growing up, I could see how they fawned over me and cherished me, while they would always walk on eggshells around Amy, terrified of accidentally sending her into one of her angry fits. I once brought a little puppy home from the street and Amy became utterly enraged to see him there. She screamed at the top of her voice about how her parents had denied her a dog for years and how unfair it was that they were allowing me to keep one. I told her we could share the puppy together. I was young and I hoped that she would love me. I had no idea what she truly was. We kept the puppy, Terrence, together. Amy, however, wouldn't let me play with him or even come near him. Even if I cried and cried, Amy would simply laugh cruelly from the other side of the locked door while little Terrence would bark on. It was torture. One day when Amy was in school, I broke the lock of her room and stole Terrence. I just wanted to play with him for a little while. He seemed so excited to be out of that cramped room too, his little tail wagging all around. So I happily went to our backyard with him and a frisbee. I found his tracks leading away into the forest behind our house, but they went all the way into the dangerous, dark areas. I was forbidden from going in there. Dejected, I came home and told Amy and my parents that I lost Terrence. That's when true hell was unleashed on me. Amy lost her mind. She began to wail loudly, uncontrollably. She screamed at me for breaking into her room and attacked me, trying to yank on my hair. My father pulled her back before she could reach me and Amy swore that she was going to get me back for doing this to her. I cried and swore up and down that I didn't mean to lose Terrence. I loved him too, to make her suffer. She told me that now she would make me suffer. I had no way to know how much she meant those words. I'm not a cruel person, so I had no way to understand how much she truly wanted me to ache. She hid under my bed one night, waiting for me to slip under the covers. Then, when I was resting in my bed, she grabbed my ankles and let out a horrific screech, yanking me off the bed. I was so terrified, my heart nearly leapt out of my throat. I cried for my parents as I crashed on the floor. Amy stood up and laughed at me, walking away with a pompous bounce. Weeks after that day, I went on a date with Henry Hills, the cutest boy in our school. I was so excited about this. I could barely stand it. He took me out for dinner and ice cream, and then I brought him home to meet my family. When I took him to my room, however, the sight before him made him scream. All of my dolls were hung by noose around their neck. They swung side to side from the ropes attached to the rafters, like so many bodies. Henry Hills ran out of my room. He never spoke to me again since that day. The reports of my house of horror spread like wildfire and no one from school would come to my house anymore. They were all terrified of Amy. How could she do this? What the hell was wrong with Amy? I knew she was sick, but this was getting out of hand. What I didn't know was that she was just getting started. She snuck into my room the night before the spring dance at school. She climbed in through the window with a pair of scissors, a pair of scissors, a pair of... I threw my laptop on the floor in a rage and I stomped on it. I hate you, Dad. I hate you even more, Mom. I wish I was born in a different family. How could they take a hundred freaking thousand dollars from me? Hi, I'm Ashley and my family's hate for me wasn't new. See, on my seventh birthday, my parents didn't even remember it was my special day. And when I told them, they only said, who do you think you are, the president? It would have been okay if they didn't throw a huge party for my brother on his birthday. And they even bought him a freaking iPod. He was their favorite child. I wasn't even allowed to go to anyone's place. I was expected to come straight home from school, do my homework and help with dinner, while my brother would often be out playing in the park or playing video games. The one time mom did allow me to invite a girl I'd just become friends with over, it was a total nightmare. My friend accidentally spilled some juice on the tablecloth and my mom screamed at her, leaving her in tears. I was so embarrassed and horrified that I never invited anyone again.
I remember one Halloween when I was nine, I designed a really spooky costume for my brother and me, and we scared the hell out of the neighborhood kids. When my mom found out, she told me to never wear a costume again, or she'd dump me in a foster home. She said, you already look like a zombie. You don't need a costume. But she didn't say a single word to my brother. I was so sad because trick-or-treating was my favorite pastime. Things at school weren't much better. I was shy and had trouble making friends. This made me an easy target for bullies. One day, a boy snatched my lunchbox and threw my lunch in the garbage. Everyone in the class thought it was really funny and laughed at my tears. Then another day, something strange happened to me. We were solving math questions in class, and my teacher asked us to solve 46 multiplied by 72. I shouted 3,312 without thinking. Everyone stared at me. I felt so scared. My teacher asked again, me specifically, what is 113 multiplied by 22? I didn't need a calculator. I replied 2,468 after some hesitation. The class gave me weird looks for weeks afterward. Another time when I was bored in recess, I saw the math teacher and a senior working on something. I passed by them and saw they were working on a question. They seemed stuck, so I offered to help and solve the question in a minute. They were stunned. The senior smiled shyly at me and said he thought I was the smartest person he'd ever met. He said he'd been working on the question for weeks. This happened so often that I needed someone to talk to about the changes I was experiencing. So I talked to my mother. Bad idea. She laughed for a long time and then said, You forget. I am your mother. I know you're stupid and have no skills in anything. I waited for my dad to return that week and then told him the story. To my surprise, he was amazed how good I was at math and encouraged me. One day, we had important guests. I was expected to stay out of sight in my room. According to my mother, there's no point in you meeting these people. You're not that important, you know. I didn't want to stay in my room, so I went to Dad's study. I always entertained myself there, but this time, I noticed something. Tucked behind a pile of books was an old laptop. I opened it and went through the folders. The files were about my dad's business. Oh, these people were losing a lot of money. I decided to help them out, and plus, it was fun for me. I sent them a message through their email to tell them how to fix things. I eventually got tired and went to bed. Weeks later, they emailed me back. They thanked me for my kind suggestions and even offered $100,000 for my help. They expected me to come to their headquarters to accept the reward. $100,000? That's a lot for a girl my age, and since I had no idea how to get the money on my own, I did something very stupid. When my dad returned home from work, I excitedly told him about everything that had happened. He promised to meet them on my behalf and get the reward. The next day, my cruel dad had already gone and collected the entire amount in cash. When I confronted him and asked for my money, he only laughed and asked, what would a stupid, ugly girl like you need with so much money? I was disgusted. I wanted to hit him. I said, I want to save for college. He only laughed harder and walked away. I was so angry. I threw the laptop on the floor and smashed it. In the weeks that followed, my mom and dad laughed at every little thing I did. They were delighted by my misery. My dad even got a new expensive car. I was so excited to go for a drive in it, but as soon as I opened the door, he said, oh no, kids aren't allowed in this car. He didn't even let me look at it. He said that I would give the car bad karma, like I had for him my whole life. As much as I tried to be happy, I only got angrier, knowing it was my reward money these insane people were spending. One day, when I got back from school, I saw my brother messing up my room. I was horrified. What was he doing? As soon as he saw me, he grabbed my arm and started shaking me. Where's the money? He demanded. I told him I didn't have it and that dad had taken it all, but he wouldn't believe me. He tore my room apart and threatened me that he wanted $50 by the end of the day or else. Then he left. I broke down. As if this wasn't enough, another piece of drama unfolded in my life. That night over dinner, my brother said, Can you believe this stupid waste has a boyfriend? I hear he's only with her because she's good at math. So stupid. I couldn't believe it. Why would he lie like that? Then my parents started laughing, and Dad said, Yeah, she's a math freak, just like her mom. Mom froze. Then she started yelling and stormed into their bedroom. My dad rushed in after her. I was so curious. So I snuck to their room and tried to hear what they were fighting about. Why had mom gotten mad like that? Mom was yelling all sorts of crazy things, and dad was yelling right back. Then I heard something that left me totally shook. Mom was saying I wasn't her child. She was screaming like a wild animal at my dad. That girl is no daughter of mine. I will not have all these years of effort wasted. She was saying that she would take every penny I had because I'd been a burden on her for years. Dad was yelling back. He was saying he only had an affair because she was a 
always screaming. I'd heard enough. I pushed the door open and ran inside. My father went quiet, but my mother looked at me angrily. She started shouting at me, You're not my daughter. You're his secret child. I hate you. She was crying and yelling at the same time. I yelled back and said I hated her too. Then I rushed outside because I couldn't stop crying. But in my heart, it all made sense. Why my mom and dad hated me. Why they always wanted me to hide. The next week was horrible. We all just tried to pretend that nothing had happened. Over dinner one evening, my mother joked about how much richer our family would be if I stopped hiding in my room. I decided enough was enough. I threw my plate across the table at her. The plate missed her face by an inch, but a shard from it smashing on the wall hit her. Her forehead started to bleed. As soon as she saw the blood, she went absolutely crazy. She cursed at me from the top of her lungs. The neighbors heard the shouting and came and rescued me from her. I wished so hard that plate hadn't missed her face. The next day, my mom left. We didn't hear anything from her. She just disappeared. She only left a note on the fridge. I'll make sure you won't forgive me. I knew that mom was a woman of her word. She would do something crazy soon. Surprisingly, my dad came to my room a few days later with a brand new laptop for me. What's this for, dad? I asked with so much excitement, forgetting the events of the last few weeks. Something to keep your gift shining, he said before leaving my room quickly. In the following months, my dad would come to check on me. He wasn't really concerned about me, though. He only wanted to know if I had made any cash or not. To him, my talent was his lottery ticket. One day, I returned home from school with a headache. My father was there, and he called me over. I was excited because I hoped he was concerned about my health, but unsurprisingly, he only asked if I'd talk to any other big companies. I got mad and told him I had no idea if I would ever make more money since the first time was pure luck. He got so angry and said, If you don't make more money... I'll ground you for as long as I want. I told him he could do whatever he wanted. I vowed that I would never give him a single penny ever again. Weeks later, one day after class, I noticed one of my classmates sitting by herself and flipping angrily through the book she held. She seemed very upset. What's wrong? I asked. She told me she was very bad with numbers. I offered to tutor her after school. And in a matter of a week, she was already solving number problems like an expert. She was extremely pleased and I was happy for her. That's when I found what made me happy, helping others. The following week, my dad came into my room and asked if I had found any jobs with top-paying companies. I told him I hadn't. I repeated my decision never to contact any company ever again. Dad shouted at me and told me I was grounded until I came to my senses. I was limited to only two meals a day. I would have gone insane if I hadn't had my laptop. It was during this time, while I was browsing the internet, that I got an idea. I would start a YouTube channel where I could share my life experience and help anyone who needed help with numbers. So that's exactly what I did. And I didn't regret it. As the next year passed, my channel grew bigger by the day. The channel became my escape. By the time I finally left for college, I had a YouTube channel with almost a million subscribers. I discussed my problems and challenges with all kinds of people. I also ran a weekly math segment. They gave me views and more importantly, love. That was enough for me. One morning, I woke up to hundreds of notifications. I was so excited. Did one of my videos go viral? I opened my phone and to my surprise, I'd lost tons of subscribers overnight. I also had a lot of hate mail. I scrolled to see a new YouTuber had appeared and was shaming me for lying about my family. What? I opened the profile. It was my brother. I practically passed out. My brother had started spewing hate about me everywhere. He also said I had run away after stealing money from him. I knew that mom was behind all of this, but I had no evidence. Immediately, I called him. He demanded I give him $10,000 to shut up. So that's what this was about. I was furious. I told him he wouldn't get a penny from me and cut off the call. After that, his videos became meaner and meaner. He started spreading all kinds of crazy stories about me. He said I wasn't actually good at math, I was just stealing his notes. It was unbearable. I tried making a video telling everyone how he was trying to destroy me, but no one believed me. I was devastated. That's when something amazing happened. After one of my live YouTube videos, one of my viewers sent a message asking if we could meet. It was a bit strange for someone to be so insistent, especially after what my brother was doing, so I ignored him at first. Then a few days later, he messaged me again. He said he knew how to deal with my brother. He believed me? I agreed to meet him, but I was nervous. What if it's just a stupid prank? I wondered. I went to the coffee shop he had asked me to go to. I didn't even know his name. Eventually, a handsome young man around my age walked up to me. He sat across from me and introduced himself as Jake. He shook my hand and said, I've been waiting to meet you for so long, Ashley. 
I was confused. Weren't we there to deal with my brother? I told him I thought he was talking to the wrong person, and I got up to leave. But he grabbed my hand and asked me to sit. I couldn't stop blushing. He asked me if I truly didn't remember him. I said I didn't. He told me I had helped him and a teacher with a very difficult math problem once. 